us today, Mr. Bruce Jackson. Mr. Bruce Jackson out of ATL, Georgia. He is the owner, the founder of Backfist Customs Litter. Um, if you guys haven't heard of it, I'm going to take you to his website in a little bit. But Bruce, talk to us. Tell tell us about, hey, Jackie, Jackie's on with us. Tell us about Backfist Customs. Tell us about how that started. Tell us about Bruce Jackson. All right. So I started, I wanted to, um, I started doing custom shoes probably about four years ago. Mm-hmm. And I really liked doing that. I was able to customize. It started with me wanting to buy some, but I couldn't afford to buy my own pair. So what okay. I, you know, I started just researching, looking to see what I needed to get to do it. And I started making them. I did a trial run, making them for friends and family before I started making them big and started selling them to people. So I got to the point where I was making them for celebrities and professional football players, wow. things of that nature. Right. And I think the most someone ever paid for a pair of shoes was a thousand dollars. No but, way. Yeah. thousand dollars. But the problem here is it takes a lot of time to make these custom shoes, right? Um, like I could, I could easily spend a week and a half on a pair of shoes because I'm trying to get every little thing right and every little thing perfect. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So one of the, one of the customs I was doing was glitter shoes where someone wanted some shoe Air Force Ones or high heels, or if they wanted it to be Timberland boots, all one color glitter, multiple colors, you know, I did some Wonder Woman uh, designs before with glitter. Wow. So one of the glitter vendors just said, hey, why don't you just sell the glitter on your own? You know, you could just sell it on your own. So they kind of planted that seed. And I said, mm, okay, I guess I'll, I'll try it. You know, so I tell a lot of people, I never really set out to just say, hey, I'm going to sell glitter and be this big and all this other stuff. I never even knew it would blow or be that big, right? I, mm-hmm. I kind of feel like it was something God just kind of threw in my lap. And then from there, it was on me to manage it and make sure I take care of it and, you know, take, you know, take care of the gift that was given to me. So started from there. I literally started at my table, just getting a couple of colors here and there, getting the exact size people wanted. Then moved to my garage. Now moved to a big retail space, about three thousand square feet. That's big. That's big. So okay, so let's take it back. Let's take it back to you were doing custom shoes. You said custom, and you you mentioned glitter. So like, what what made you? Okay, so you wanted shoes, is what you said. You wanted a pair of shoes. You couldn't afford them. How did you just pitch yourself to people like, okay, well, I, you know, I can make these for you for a certain amount or whatever. So the thing, what makes it easy nowadays is I don't think I ever pitch myself to people. It's the reviews, mm-hmm. the marketing, the pictures that they see and pitches for you, right? So mm-hmm. people see, they see the pictures that I'm putting up on Instagram. They see how the custom shoes I'm making. They come to me and they're like, hey, I got a picture right here. How much would you charge to do these? Or I want these Adidas right here, but I want them purple, fading to pink. How much would you charge to do that? You know, and then we kind of work it out from there. I never really, I, I mean, I made some business cards in case I need to leave ideas with people, but I never really went out seeking seeking those customers. They came to you because you you had a good product. You did something good. So right, or word word of mouth, or you know, word of mouth. Like the people, for, for instance, who's interested in custom shoes, they get they'll get on Instagram and follow every custom shoe maker page they can. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. From there, mm-hmm. they'll kind of buy reviews and the pictures their way, who's good, who's not, um, who's got the best prices, whatever. And they may reach out to everybody. You know what I mean? You never really know. Yeah. So, okay. So, because Jackie's asking, so Backfist is only four years old then, right? Mm-hmm. Well, You've that done, was, I mean... back, Backfist Customs is three years old. The glitter piece of it is three years old. So, okay. 2017, that's when I started doing the glitter piece of it. Okay. And you just taught yourself, did you just look and say, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to figure out how to make these shoes. Or did you look, mm-hmm. did you, you just did it yourself. You just experimented. Yes, I, just, um, I was watching YouTube videos. And then I think the, the main thing is trying to do it for yourself and family. I didn't jump right into mm-hmm. taking orders and trying to make money. Um, right. Like I've like my, I got a cousin that makes, he makes fun of me all the time. Cause he's like, man, those first shoes you gave me a long time ago were so slick on the bottom. I was painting the bottom of the shoes and everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> not, yeah. not knowing that I don't need to do that or it's not going to last or whatever. I'm just painting it all up. <laughs> yeah. And then I said, oh, now the shoe looks glossy. That don't really look like it's a factory shoe like that. I need it to look matte. Oh, I need to change this and don't do that. You know, so it's all those little things you learn along the way. And, and I one think thing that's that important. I did, go ahead. One no, thing go ahead. I did to, short, to shorten the learning curve, and I try to suggest this to people now, and I don't know if they think I'm just after their money or not, but 
I didn't want to take all day or years experimenting and failing. So I mm -hmm. found people that was already good at it. And I asked them how much would they charge me to teach them? Because I already mm -hmm. know they have the experience. I know they put the time in. So I'm like, listen. So I had about three or four mentors that I would go to. And I would say, listen, I've got patent leather, but I want to paint it. What do I do? Or how do I prep it? What do I need to do? What should I use? Where do I get that from? You know, I'll give you $100 or $200 if you can make sure I do this all the way through, you know. And I would write my notes, take notes, and, make, you know, keep up with everything I'm actually doing with what they're saying. So what you're telling us is that don't be afraid to spend money with people who already got it to yeah. to help us improve ourselves, basically. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's the key. You, like, you have to invest in yourself. You know what I mean? If you don't, you're either going to invest in yourself or like some good teachers and coaches to make sure you're doing it right from the beginning, mm -hmm. or you're going to have to invest in the time and the failures. And there's still a lot of money wasting you're using. You know what I mean? Yes. Most, most importantly, is time. You know. Right. The time is because you can't get that back. You can't get that back, and you know, that's right. time that you could be using to be more productive, to do things better from the beginning. Right. Like I have no clue how to sew. But you just said you're in a sewing space over there, so I, I assume you know how to sew. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't take, I wouldn't go on YouTube and look at some. I mean, I'm sure there's YouTube videos that say, "Here's your list. This is all the stuff you need to get." I'm not going to go out there and buy all that stuff and see here myself trying to figure out what to do and thinking that I got it all figured out. Then I got holes on my material, you know, different <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> or I just say, "Hey, I think she knows how. Let me see how much she charged me." You know what I mean? Right. And I like that. I like that because you're not afraid to go take your stuff somewhere else because you know it's going to benefit you. Good job. Right. Good job. I like yeah. that. So let's talk more about the glitter then because that's everybody's right. favorite thing. Yeah. And the people think, you know, that's what you're known for. Custom glitter. Custom glitter. Right. What? I mean, wow. How did you go from your kitchen table? Like you said, you're at the table. Now you've got this 3,000 square foot place. Yeah. What is it stocked with? I mean, man. So, so I really... How I made the transition, I went from the table to the garage to the, to the store, right? Mm -hmm. But one thing I wanted to be big on to set myself apart was I didn't want to run out of my inventory. Okay. A lot of people a lot of people just jump into trying to sell glitter because they just see the dollar signs. But I'm right. like, I want to keep my customers happy. I want to have the good customer service. And I don't want to run out. Like I think the worst thing in the world would be to run out of the glitter that people are buying. Because you may buy Atlanta Nights, for instance, and you may make a couple of cups and everybody love it. So you don't know if tomorrow, if you're going to get one sale, or you may have a company to come and want 50 cups that need this color. So me, I feel like that's my staple. I have to keep this in stock. So I started making, ordering and making like pounds at a time, like mm -hmm. certain glitters I might have 80, 90, 100 pounds of. Wow. Just sitting and waiting, just in, right, just in case. Because you never know. You never know what could happen to make me not be able to get it in. So thinking, thinking about the customer first, I'm like, I've got to have, so can't be no excuse. Mm -hmm. And I've actually had, a, when I first started doing the monthly subscriptions, I had a time when FedEx lost all of my packages. All oh, of my no. packages were lost. Oh, no. yeah. And then that taught, that taught me a lesson there, you know, there's lessons in everything that we're doing, right? Everything that happens. Mm -hmm. But that, that taught me there that I need to always have inventory on stock. I need to be able to replace all the stuff that I've got going on in a fast way. Because, mm -hmm. you know, and you'll see people say, oh, well, I'm sorry, y'all, FedEx did this or UPS did this. But I know the customer don't really care. All right? the customer knows I paid for this, where's that? You know where's my mean? stuff? Where's my stuff? Yeah. 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 Right. And, you know, we're getting a lot of comments right now to Bruce in this end. And they're telling me, you do that. It says, which what you do, and I love that, definitely sets you apart. So you're appreciated. You're known. And I'll tell you guys this. If you guys don't know Bruce, I mean, this is my first time meeting him, talking to him face-to-face. -face, but I, you know, I love me some cut back fist customs, glitter, you know, and, and even the molds. But he's got the best customer service. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. I mean, Bruce will go back. He will let you message him and be like, okay, let me just add that to your package real quick. You know, he'll throw yeah. in something every once in a while. He's just got really good customer service and he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to because, you know, he's got a lot of, he's, he's even got a Facebook group. Tell us about your Facebook group. Oh, the Facebook group is huge. I think now we've got like 29,000 people in there. Yikes. But, you know, so the Facebook group is really set up for everybody to see what everybody else is creating because some people aren't creative to be able to really just make stuff on their own. Mm -hmm. So I don't really want people in there just stealing designs or use somebody's design for inspiration. You know, so if you're looking for ivory or you want to see what this ivory glitter looks like, 
you can look in there and should be able to search and say, oh, okay, I see what they did with it. I can kind of do that and then make this change or do whatever. You know what I mean? That's what I kind of mm -hmm. hope people will do with it. But, you know, the Facebook algorithm has changed a lot. So yeah. it's not as active as if it's 29,000 people in it. So one thing that happens, and I'm realizing now, if you don't keep being interactive with your group, with your group, right, it will slowly just die off your timeline. You won't, you won't even really realize it because people yeah. just sign into Facebook and they just scroll and they're just looking at whatever it is they see. So mm -hmm. they don't even really realize your group or whatever that other group that they usually look at kind of fell off if they're not in there commenting and saving posts and sharing posts and stuff like that. Right. So that's one way we, we can support you and other groups too, right? Is by making sure yeah. that we interact with the posts. Yeah. Even if we don't buy anything, just be in there, be active, right. make yeah. comments. I understand there's a lot of people that just kind of want to sit back and watch everything else. Don't want to say anything, but it still, it still helps if you like a post, if you share it, if you comment on it. Now, some of those interactions outweigh others. If right. you're sharing a post or commenting on it, that's heavier than just liking it. But I believe if you save the post, I believe that's the biggest. You know Especially I mean? on Instagram. When you save it, man, mm -hmm. that's what that's big right now on Instagram, too. Yeah. I want to just backtrack a little bit, Bruce, because you talked okay. about your um, the subscription box. Okay. And yeah. that tell, tell us about, because I have some stuff here. I was going to show everybody how much I appreciate and love your subscription box. So just, okay. just tell us a little bit more about that. So the subscription box, when I, first, when I first designed it, I was thinking, I was saying it was either going to be four one ounce glitters or maybe six or seven half ounce glitters. And I was thinking about the half ounces because I was saying, what well, I may want to make a theme, right? So like the colors that's coming out now, that's about to be shipped out, I think next week, those were themed around the gingerbread house. So I've got the colors that you can make a gingerbread cup if you wanted to, but I'm going to include some non-fabric adhesive in there. That way, if they want to glue, like glue anything else on it, or if you want to use that to make the whole cup of it, you can. But I started adding so many other freebies to it that the freebies started being expected, you know. Mm -hmm. So now that the four one ounce glitters kind of changed to five one ounce glitters plus an extra, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, and it's yeah. okay. I mean, I was like, well, it increased the value of the glitter also. So I mean, the value of the subscription. So that's kind of what I'm shooting for now when I'm looking for something. And so no. I like that you mentioned the theme thing because that's what mm -hmm. I think I love the most. I think I've done three subscription boxes and mm -hmm. the, the theme is what really drew, because I'm a theme, I'm a thematic person. I love themes. Somebody's asking, what's the name of the group? It's Backfist Customs Glitter, right? Backfist Customs, all one word, then glitter, and then the word creations. Yes, Backfist Customs Glitter Creations, guys. Right. Make okay. sure to answer all four of the questions. So we can answer the questions, in, guys. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of people answer one or two or someone to refer them. But, you know, we want to make sure that they're answering the questions, whatever, so we know, okay, they know what they're getting into and all that, you know. Yes, and that's important for any group, guys. Make sure you answer the questions. That's just respectful, too. You know, we want to make sure that we're doing what we, you know, our due diligence and making sure, we, like Bruce said, you know what you're getting into, um, following the rules, stuff like that. But I wanted to show you guys a couple of the su subscription boxes that I had gotten. So this theme, and I was, like, just blown away. Look at these, whoops, find my camera. Can you guys see those? These are so cool. This was a flower theme, guys. This one, mm -hmm. so he had forget-me-not glitter. And then he had, in the same box, Lucky Charm glitter. But then he had, um, what is this one? The Calla Lily. Mm -hmm. And then this one, my favorite, the Hydrangea with the different purples. Isn't that cute? I mean, and that was a whole thing. There was something else. And then what else? You had put something else in that box too. I can't remember. But he it was a whole a whole yeah, theme of stuff. And then my first one that I got, and this was my favorite. I have to show you guys. We only have a few minutes left. This one, I keep losing my camera. These were the shaved <laughs> ice. This was in the summer. Oh my oh, goodness. Man. After this, I was going to the store every day. <laughs> get me some shaved. Asked, they've still been asking about those colors. These, yeah, you put them together, you can do a theme, but you don't have to use them together. You can take them out, use them with other right, backfits, right. glitters and stuff, but it's it's really cool how you can just get a whole, a whole theme in a box mm -hmm. and you're ready to go. And it's not just the glitter, like he said, one box he sent us the straws to go along with the cups as a freebie, two boxes of straws with the straw cleaner. He sent us some um, um, nice and thick from Counterculture. Um, mm -hmm. 
and you send us some quick coat from just different things. So yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, very yeah, valuable. I think the the most valuable thing I've added far I think would be that the little measuring tape people can use. Okay. Um, I, okay. I feel like I go around measuring everything all day every day. So the other day, I have to tell you this in because it's funny. My husband was hanging the mirror. I needed him to hang a mirror in the house. And he's mm -hmm. like, okay, well, it's a big mirror. He says, um, well, I need a level. <laughs> so he goes, do you have a level? I go to my craft room real quick in my drawer and I get out my, because Bruce said it levels, good. right? He's all like, if, you're, if your stuff isn't coming out right, it's tilted. It's because you need to level it. Use this level. Mm -hmm. Little B level. My husband's like, okay, nah, go get me a real level from the garage. <laughs> but <laughs> even things like that. Yeah, you're, you know, like, little, you're like, well, this will not work. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can't food so work. small. Just put, it, just put it right in the middle. It'll work. Just in the middle. Okay, before mm -hmm. we go, Bruce, because Ram, I know you got to get Bruce is actually at work right now. He took time it's out. Okay. To help. I, I got I got some extra time. It's cool. Okay. Tell us about your name, Back Fist Customs, because I like this story. Tell us about Back Fist. Bam, okay. Back so, Fist Customs. So before I was doing the customs, I was already doing kickboxing and karate. And I used to fight in karate tournaments and stuff. So they started calling me Backfist Jackson because Backfist is one of the uh, moves that we use all the time. And that, it's literally just like the back the back of your fist is doing this, you know, right to the side of somebody's head, right? But that's that's where that word Backfist came from. So when I started doing custom shoes and I needed to make the, you know, a logo and a brand and stuff. So the person I worked with, he came up with the idea of putting that fist right in the middle of the logo. And so the word Backfist is going over the top and it's made out of the karate belt. And then the word customs is going under the bottom made out of the shoelaces. I'm going to show so you guys that right now. I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see that. You guys, so on your screen, you probably see. So here's his logo, Back Fist Customs. You see that fist, the shoelace. And I didn't notice this, so he, he brought it out to us in, a, in another interview he was doing. There's a shoelace for the shoes, mm -hmm. Back Fist. Isn't that cool? The karate belt right here. Mm -hmm. And if you check out Bruce's um, website, backfistcustoms.com, he also has an Etsy shop, but I really like his website. He's got his products. I was going to show you guys the glitter. Whoops. Real quick. Look at that. He has a fall. He has the fall packs. Um, this two cents glitter is like something. And that's the thing about quality glitter you have the 24 karat gold and you have the two cents and you, i mean there's you if you have one it's not like you can use the other you know you can't use it to replace the other they're they're so unique i love it and i have all these different glitter and i will say so every everybody that makes cups or molds or anything with glitter everybody's not exactly the same right but mm -hmm. so I, that's another thing from the group i want people to watch what others do see how they make this glitter stretch because a lot of people when they talk about the price, there's just like, man, it's so expensive. But I've had some people that can use that two ounce uh, jar of glitter and make seven to 10 cups with it. You know what yep. I mean? It's really all in how you use it and how you recycle that glitter and keep up with it and all that. You know what I mean? That's right. And quality yeah. glitter is important, guys. It makes a difference. I've seen the difference. Yeah. When I first started glittering, I was like, okay, I'm going to use Walmart glitter. You know, I got what I have. You know, I'm a teacher. I have glitter all the time, you know, arts and crafts. Mm -mm, oh, yeah. No comparison when I, to when I started using Bruce's glitter. So when I used to use this glitter to make custom shoes, that sold it like crazy, right? I would always mm -hmm. finish the shoe, and I wouldn't. I would use my adhesive, my glitter, and I wouldn't have to seal it because if you do it the right way, it's on. It's there. Now some mm -hmm. of the top top glitter that's on there may loosen up a little bit. It may like kind of walk off over time, but it's there really. And what I would do was I had I found a spot by this church. Where the sunlight was just the sunlight was just beaming right there, and I would mm -hmm. go put the shoe on top of this on top of my car, with that sun hitting it, and I would just get right there and level with it and take that picture, or I would hold it and just move it just a little bit, just mm -hmm. a little bit in the sun, mm -hmm. and you would just see all of that sparkle right there, whether it's high heels, shoes, or whatever, and that's the videos that I was using on Instagram, and okay. it, it it was blowing up like customers were coming from everywhere, so. Before I ever started selling glitter really hard, I had 20,000 followers already on Instagram. Yikes. I, just, I got their whole account deleted because of trademark problems. You know, yeah. I was doing a lot of custom shoes with team logos and things of that nature. So if anybody ever wondered, that's why I don't allow a lot of that now in the Facebook group. 
because I realized as I got as I get bigger, I have to take care of the company and you know I have to watch out for things like that because it might not be that they catch you, somebody else could turn me in. You know, it's just as easy mm-hmm. for you to go over here and say, hey, he's got this Alabama logo up. And it was I had a pair of Alabama shoes from about three years ago and a pair of Miami Hurricanes. Uh oh, Bruce. Lost you with the sound. Hold on. Okay. Can you hear me? There you go. There you go. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Some, somebody tried to call me. So, those shoes were going around like crazy in these Facebook groups. Everybody was passing them around. You know, so Facebook groups, they have the real dedicated fans. You know what I mean? And some of mm-hmm. those fans, like some, a lot, most people were saying, How much? I need a size six. I need a size eight. Can I get four pair and all of this other stuff? Everybody was asking like that, but then, you know, you had some people who was in there. Do you have a license to be making these? I'm going to contact such and such and this and that. So all fame ain't good fame. You know what I mean? So I got to a point to where I was like, okay, I need to, but I can never describe that feeling of what it felt like that morning when I logged in and I just opened up the Instagram app like normal and it said, user not available. And I was like, what? So I closed it out, tried to open it up again. My, my heart is a something, you know what I mean? That's. It's real. I mean, when you build your your brand and you build your account up that big, that's all your advertising. That's all your marketing. You're DMing people, so all your customers, you get messages back and forth between them. All of it just gone overnight. So that, and that, like you said, everything's a lesson. Everything's a lesson. You know, yeah. there's some chances we're willing to take, but there's some chances we shouldn't take. Right. You know, so, and so especially now, you, we learn. We learn. We well, know better now. Yep. So now my Facebook group, I don't allow any trademark stuff, or I'll say. Before it gets to that point where you're putting that on, go ahead and take the picture then, post it then. Right. And I feel like that kills a lot of the group activity, but I'm like, it has to be better than me trying to log in one day and the whole Facebook group be gone. You know what I mean? Right. So, and that's where a lot of, you know, so see, learning from Bruce, that's where, that's one thing I learned before I um, opened my group, you know, no trademark stuff. And it's not because I don't like it. You know, we all like it. And we like that we right. can dig, make it at home on our own without having to pay all the dollars, right? But- right. You know, there's there's got to be a line somewhere. So, yep. appreciate that, Bruce. Where can we find you? You can find me on YouTube, um, Back to Customs Glitter. Um, you can find me on Instagram. Find me on Facebook. That's my main place. Now, a lot of people don't understand that I have two different websites. Mm-hmm. I have the website you just showed. Then I'm also on Etsy. And a lot of people don't want to break away from Etsy. I guess they feel more secure. Because on Etsy, if something goes wrong, you know, it's kind of disputed or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So I would like for people to, to spend more money or buy more on the website because it's charges so many little fees to me, to the seller. Yes. But either way, I, either way, I'm happy to support them regardless, no matter how they come to. So real quick, before we go to Bruce, what do you call the um, your patrons in your group? Not your patrons, but what do you call your... Oh, the, 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 my tribe is Bruce Troops. The Bruce Troops, yes. Yeah, the Bruce troops. <laughs> so, so Bruce, and I'm I'm a Bruce Troop, and Bruce is also in the craft group. But so, if you guys have any questions for Bruce or any questions for me that you want to pass on, go ahead, drop them in the in the messages here in this thread, and he'll get to them, or I'll get to them. Again, you can support him on Instagram, Facebook, his website, um, and YouTube. So everybody, yep. have a great day, Bruce. Thanks for being. With